Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for joining us today, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Nicole. I work on the admissions team focusing on recruiting for the full time MBA program. I am so excited to be here with you all this morning to talk more about our program here at CPS and um, some application logistics. Um, but before we get started, I just want to introduce some other folks we have on um, online with us this morning. I am joined by Isaac Moore from the admissions team. He will be monitoring the Q&A box throughout the session um, and saving some to call out um, live at the end. I'm also joined by Lauren. Um, she is a entering her second year at CBS. Um, I'd love to turn it over to her to introduce herself. Hi everyone, um, as Nicole said, I'm Lauren. I am a rising second year at CBS. Um, prior to Columbia, I was in education. So I did Teach for America and taught for a while and then was in school administration for a few years. Um, I made a pivot during business school to management consulting and over the summer interned at BCG in the Dallas office. Um, at Columbia, some of um, my favorite classes have been org change. Um, as well as capital markets, something that I clearly in background in education have never had exposure to before. Um, and I'm also a member of the Management Consulting Association, um, Nonprofit Board Leadership Program and Gourmet Club and look forward to answering any and all questions later on. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so with that, we can get started. Um, here's just a quick look at what we will be discussing today. We will talk about kind of all sides of the MBA experience at Columbia Business School. Um, so the academic experience, the access you would have to New York City by um, completing your MBA here, um, the community that's fostered at our school, the resources you would have access to as a student, and then finally some next steps um, to talk more about the application process, um, as I'm sure many of you are thinking about submitting your 2023 applications if you're on this call today. Um, but you're all thinking about applying at a very exciting time. Um, as of January 2022, we are on a brand new campus in Manhattanville. So before we dive into the presentation, I'd just like to share um, a little glimpse into the campus and, and what our school looks like. Oops, sorry. Um, so I hope that gave you a little look into what um, our new campus looks like. It's bright, it's open. Um, it is really designed to foster collaboration and group work and teamwork, which is something we really value at Columbia Business School. Um, but yes, this slide just kind of summarizes a little bit of what I've said already that we'll focus on talking about, you know, the academic side of um, Columbia. New York City and how that plays a role. Um, and of course, the, the community um, at, on campus and around the world that is fostered, um, fostered here. Um, so kind of taking a step back, big picture, um, there are many ways to achieve your MBA at Columbia Business School and everyone graduates with the same um, MBA degree at the end of whichever program they choose to um, complete. So this um, session today will really focus on the full-time MBA program, which has two entry points, which I'll dive a little deeper into on the next slide. But for anyone else on this call who is thinking of programs outside of our um, full-time MBA program, um, we do have a deferred enrollment program for any college seniors that are on the, um, on the line today. Anyone who um, is in their final year of an undergraduate program, 
or is completing um, a master's program that they started right after um, an undergraduate degree, you would be eligible to apply um, to our full-time MBA program through a deferred enrollment application, which basically would mean if you are accepted, you would go out and work for two to five years and um, defer starting um, until you gain some of that full-time work experience. And um, a seat will be held in one of those classes for you to join um, when you're ready. Um, on the flip side, if you have closer to maybe 10 or so years of work experience and you're looking to continue working full-time while achieving your MBA, um, one of our executive MBA programs might be a great fit for you. Um, there's a few different options there as well. And we have some EMBA specific information sessions um, that I would encourage you to join if that is something you are thinking about. Um, but as I mentioned, we're going to focus on the full-time MBA today. And I want to talk a little bit more about those two entry points um, that I mentioned. So you can start in August, which is your traditional 20 month MBA program. Um, you would start in the fall, take classes through the spring until the summer where you would leave campus and go complete an internship. And then you would come back in the fall to complete year two. Um, we also have our January entry point, which is pretty unique to Columbia. Um, this is a great option for people looking to do the full-time program on a bit of an accelerated um, timeline. So it's 16 months, um, you would start in the spring rather than the fall, and you would stay on campus through the summer to take classes to kind of make up for that time. So you would be um, foregoing a full-time summer internship by choosing the January um, entry point. And then in the second year, you would kind of merge with that August class and complete your MBA together and graduate together in the spring. So if you're thinking about, you know, what would be right for you, um, you know, in August, we see about 600 students start. Um, these are students looking to make a large career shift or need that full-time summer internship recruiting experience in investment banking or consulting, um, you know, these are students who really need that summer internship to achieve their post MBA goal. In January, we see about 200 students start, so a smaller cohort. Um, and these are students who don't necessarily need or want a summer internship to achieve their post MBA goal. So oftentimes, these are students who are sponsored by their company and planning to return there after they graduate. Um, students working for family business or as entrepreneurs, you know, again, someone who doesn't necessarily need a full-time summer internship and can you know, choose to complete the program on a bit of an accelerated timeline um, would be a great fit for January. Okay, so before we dive into the um, academic side of things here, I want to just highlight the, what we call the five pillars. These are the Dean's main initiatives at the school right now. Um, and they're really woven into the curriculum and just you know, kind of the environment in general at the, at the school. So inventing the future of finance, you know, we are in New York City, we are at the financial center of the world. We want to, you know, continue evolving and, and creating what the future of our financial world looks like. Um, leading entrepreneurship and innovation. So many students are coming in and graduating, launching really cool startups and products and technologies. There is a huge hub of startups and an entrepreneurial spirit at the school. It's so many resources for you to take advantage of if that's something that you're interested in. Um, next, driving the digital transformation of business. You know, this is kind of integrated into the curriculum. Um, it's also seen in the fact that all of our MBA degrees are STEM designated, which kind of speaks to the data and analytic side of the curriculum that's kind of embedded in the school. Um, a STEM designation is is great for all of our students, but especially international students. It um, also grants you an extended work visa to stay in the US um, after graduation, if that was something you were looking to do. Um, next, powering climate sustainability and energy transformation. Um, again, it, it's woven into our curriculum, but it's also kind of embedded in everyday life at Columbia. Our new bu buildings were built to be sustainable, and I truly believe that everyone at the school, you know, really works hard to, um, to stay sustainable and stay green. Um, and finally, elevating the role of business in society. Again, keeping up with what's happening in the world around us, constantly evolving, constantly changing. Nothing at Columbia Business School is static, um, which I think is 
really, really important as our world is quickly changing every week, every month, every year. So um, we'll get a little bit more into this as we dive into the academic side of things right now. So our academics are of course, you know, founded on our faculty members. So you have over 300 faculty members at Columbia Business School. Um, about half of those are what we call our tenure track faculty members, some of which are featured on this slide. Um, these are professors who are experts in their area of study. They have PhDs. They're constantly pushing out new research. Um, you know, they are fully working in the academic side of the, um, the business world. Um, on the other side, we have our adjunct faculty members. These make up about the other half of our, um, of our team here. So these are people who are still working in their respective industries. And you know, being in New York, we have so many people who are working in the city and can easily come uptown to um, teach a class in the morning or in the afternoon. So it's very hands-on, very um, practical, um, real world experience that they're bringing into the classroom for our students. So it's very possible that, you know, one of your faculty members was in a board meeting in the morning and they're coming up town in the afternoon and they're sharing what happened in that meeting um, that very morning. So I'd like to take a break from talking for a couple minutes and turn it over to Lauren. Uh, maybe if you could share a favorite faculty member you had or one you're looking forward to taking class with this semester. Yeah, so I was excited to see global philanthropy on this slide because I took that in the spring and it was one of my favorite classes. It's taught by um, a woman named Melissa Berman, who's currently the CEO of Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors. And what made the class so cool was that it was one of the classes that is three hours and meets once a week. And about half the class would be learned would be on like theories around philanthropy and understanding how philanthropy has evolved over um, decades. And then the other half would be listening to class speakers who were given her role um, outside of Columbia. Very, very impressive. Um, and we got to hear about um, international philanthropies, domestic philanthropies. And I just thought that it was such an incredible opportunity to be able to learn from someone who is clearly so renowned in her field um, in the, on the global stage. And she takes the time every year to come up to Columbia and teach the class. Um, I tell all of my classmates that if there is one class that they didn't consider taking before that they need to take now, it is global philanthropy. Thank you. That sounds like a really interesting class. I'd like to sit out, sit in on it this year if I can. Um, yeah. awesome. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so this slide kind of gives a very high level look at what your curriculum schedule would look like as a full-time MBA student. So whether you start in August or you start in January, your first semester um, will be made up of what we call the core classes. These are the foundational business school classes that we believe all of our students should take before they graduate. And these are kind of pre-formulated pre for you before you come in on your first semester. So um, in that semester, you know, you won't really choose any of your classes. You'll be taking the classes listed here. Um, once you enter your second semester, you'll wrap up the core with one more class on operations management, and then you'll start taking your electives. Um, and then those third and fourth semesters, your second year will just be your elective courses. Um, and at Columbia, we have over um, 300 electives. Um, so more that's on this slide, more than our peer schools, um, but you can kind of get a taste of this the range of electives that are offered um, at Columbia. And you see how the Dean's Five Pillars are, you know, kind of woven into the curriculum. Um, so Lauren, are there any electives that you're looking forward to taking this year or, or one that really stood out um, in your first year? Yeah, so my internship this summer was very heavy in analytics. Um, and as you saw on the last slide, all um, business school students are required to take business analytics one. But I discovered that even if in my generalist consulting role, I won't be doing as much of the heavy analytics work. I wanted to be able to understand what my teammates were doing who were actually coding and working in the analytics. So I am taking Python for MBAs and uh, business analytics too, which I think will probably be challenging, but I'm really excited that I can take <clears throat> these classes. And when I talked to some of my uh, fellow interns who were at other business schools, they 
had said they didn't have access to a class like Python for MBA. So I'm excited that I'll be able to enter work with something that's a little distinctive as well. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna kind of shift away from the classroom side of Columbia Business School and spend a few minutes talking about the access you would have um, to New York City and what that kind of looks like as, a, as an MBA student here. Um, so we are at the center of business here in New York and this slide just gives you know a very quick glimpse at some of the companies our students have gone to work for either through an internship or in a full-time role after graduation. So the school has really strong relationships with all of the um, companies listed on this slide. And again, this is just a sampling um, of the types of uh, businesses our, our students go to work for. Um, but by being here in New York, you know, you have access to these offices, to these, um, these C-suite level um, executives who work for this company who can very easily come to campus or you could go to them, um, you know, downtown, um, you know, being right here you have kind of the world at your fingertips by being in New York. Um, and a lot of these companies will come to campus. Um, they'll bring guest speakers to campus, which is what we're going to you know, look at in this slide. Um, so again, by being in New York, these guest speakers are constantly coming to campus either through classes, through the Career Management Center, through clubs. Um, some of them um, like Robert Smith, or James Gorman, they are alumni of the school, but some of these guest speakers have no you know, formal affiliation with Columbia. They're just excited to come to campus and engage with our um, students. So um, Lauren, are there any really cool or exciting guest speakers that stood, up, stood out in your mind from this past year or one you know is coming soon? <laughs> Well, I actually went to college with Carly BG um, and I followed her career after we graduated from college. She was a year above me. Um, she went to Columbia clearly several years before me, but I saw that she started this company. And so it was very exciting to see her come back to campus and be able to talk with her and hear about what she's been up to. And, and um, if you don't know what Laws of Motion is, you should look it up because it's a very, very cool, innovative um, women's uh, workwear brand. So um, that was very exciting on a personal, for personal reasons. Yes, no, that is awesome. Um, and it is a small world. <laughs> We're in a big city, but it's a small world. Uh, okay, so a major component of um, the business school is the community that's fostered here, you know, inside and outside of the classroom. Um, we're really looking to bring in students who are going to have an impact on this community and support their peers and be, you know, team players. Um, um, in their two years here and beyond. Um, so a major way that students get involved with our community is through the clubs. Um, so there are over a hundred student led clubs on campus. So again, this is just a sample. Um, the clubs are really broken up into these three different buckets. Um, you can view them as, you know, you have your professional clubs, which is really important for building your network, um, meeting peers that have the same career goals as you, connecting with alumni that are working in that space. Um, you know, these clubs really go hand in hand with the career management resources that we'll talk about a little later. Um, and, you know, they're pretty key um, in your professional journey um, while you're at the business school. Um, next, we have affinity clubs. Um, so clubs like Black Business Students Association, um, Cluster Q, Columbia Women in Business. These are clubs that host both professional and social events. And this is an opportunity for you to join a club that you know, matches your social affinity, your, your social kind of identity. Um, so these are a you know, major part of the student experience as well. And then lastly, we have social clubs. Um, these are really more hobby-based, um, a social outlet, if you will, um, to meet with people that maybe don't have the same elective interest or professional interest or affinity as you, but they share the same love of rugby and you can go play rugby together. Um, so there's plenty of different ways to get involved. And I think on average student joined about five clubs and a couple from each bucket. Um, but of course that varies. And Lauren is the president of our Hermes Society. I don't think she mentioned that. Um, her intro, um, the Hermes Society is the student branch of the admissions team that joins us on events like this. Um, but Lauren, I'd love to hear what other clubs you are involved in. Yeah, so I don't see it on here, but I'm a member of the Management Consulting Association. And as Nicole mentioned, it was absolutely 
vital in my ability to get my internship this summer. So um, those professional clubs are unbelievably helpful. Um, I'm also a member of Columbia Women in Business, which is how I was able to see speakers like Carly. Um, they host really amazing speaker series, both in the fall and in the spring, as well as just a bunch of um, networking and social events. And then I'm also a member of Gourmet Club, which is super fun because they host my favorite event, which is called Chasing Michelin Stars, where um, they get reservations at Michelin starred restaurants in New York and they subsidize your meal a certain amount. And then you can like enter a lottery to go to reservation. And I was able to get one last year, um, which was obviously a very special experience and, and something that I was really excited to be able to do and look forward to again this year. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, these clubs are constantly hosting events both on campus and around the city. So you will always have something to do <laughs> when you join these clubs. Um, awesome. So another big part of our community here is the Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership. Um, this is a co-curricular program that was actually designed by two former students. Um, and the initiative of this program is to really, um, you know, hone in our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so this is mandated for all of our full-time MBA students. Um, so you would be joining different events or programming and you know, reflecting and talking with your peers about it as part of your um, academic curriculum, um, participating in, you know, PPIL sponsored events. And the purpose of this is really to just equip our students to be the ethical and inclusive leaders. We know that they have the potential to be and we're just, you know, giving them, helping giving them the tools to, to do so. Um, so another part of our community is the alumni network. Um, we have almost 50,000 alumni around the world. Um, you could see on this next slide, not just around the country, but truly on every continent around the world, um, you will find someone from Columbia Business School. Um, and our alumni are you know, kind of always looking to give back to the school. They are involved in pretty much every component of the student life cycle. They work with admissions by conducting interviews. They work with the Career Management Center to provide coaching and networking opportunities for our students to go out and find jobs. And then they are a social circle that are welcoming you into their city or country um, you know, after you graduate. Um, I saw this firsthand myself this summer as an admissions officer um, traveling in Latin America. I was welcomed with by the alumni clubs down there with open arms and it was so wonderful to see how much they want to give back and um, you know, meet with prospective students. It was, it was really wonderful. But Lauren, I'm wondering if you've had any interactions with alumni that you were looking to highlight, uh, whether it was through your job or just on campus. Um, yeah, I'm, I think that through recruiting, um, alumni are extremely involved in the in supporting uh, through the recruiting process. So um, I recruited for consulting, which is a pretty standard process, but there's a ton of Columbia Business School alumni across offices around the world that reach out and are excited to support you on that um, process. And I think that on the other side, as you could see on uh, the slides a few before, there's a ton of really impressive business leaders who are graduates of Columbia Business School. And not only do they come back to speak at the school, but they're also available to support as well. Um, there's, a, there's a program called um, Executives in Residence, and a lot of them are business leaders who are also alums. And they uh, you can sign up for times to speak with them about a one on one even about your interests in terms of your career and your professional journey. And that's just a really special um, experience to connect with alums, but also get support um, in your professional journey. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll pivot away from, you know, the community side of um, Columbia and talk a little bit about the resources that you would have access to as a Columbia Business School student. Um, Two of the biggest questions we get in, in admissions is how will I pay for this program and will I get a job after this program? Um, so starting with will I get a job, the Career Management Center is truly world-class group of um, professionals who are with you every step of the way from the time you're admitted until you're an alumni and beyond, um, helping you, you know, land that summer internship, land that post MBA role. Um, so as Lauren was just talking about the executives and residence program, 
Um, this is just one of many resources that would be available to you through the Career Management Center. Um, these are about 20 C-suite level executives who are either recently retired or kind of sunsetting on their long successful career in, in their respective industry. Um, and they, you know, they, they don't work for the school. They're not your professor. They're not a staff member. They are truly just volunteering their time to mentor our business school students. Um, other resources are the alumni coaching program, the um, second year peer CMC fellows. So those are second year MBA students um, who you know, work part-time for the Career Management Center and help you with your resume and interview prep and you know, giving you the tools and resources you need to land whichever job it is that you are looking to, um, to find after you graduate. Um, next, financial aid. Um, so there are a few different ways that students you know, can find awards for um, you know, helping with the cost of tuition. Um, so first is the merit-based fellowships. Um, these are awarded by the uh, admissions team. There is no additional application required. Um, these are you know, based on the merits of your application. Um, so like I said, no additional materials are required, but you do need to apply for admission by January 11th, 2023 in this application cycle if you would like to be considered for any merit-based awards. And we'll dive into the um, deadlines um, in a few slides, but what's the biggest takeaway here is that there are no additional materials required um, for these fellowships. Um, next are need-based scholarships that would be provided through the Office of Financial Aid. Um, so this would happen after you are admitted. Um, if you're admitted, you can then apply for a need-based scholarship um, through their office. And then lastly, there are loans available that can be helped um, facilitated by the Office of Financial Aid for both US students and international students. Um, students often use a combination of these three types of um, financial aid packages, as well as some personal savings um, to finance the cost of the program. Um, okay, Lauren, you can sit back and relax for a little bit until our um, q and I'm going to spend some time kind of diving into the application um, you know, cycle and logistics in these next few slides. Um, but before we start, we just like to kind of call out our honor code here. Um, it's something we really take seriously at Columbia Business School. Like I mentioned earlier, we are looking to bring in ethical and inclusive leaders. Um, and we want to, you know, start that right from the beginning when you submit your application. So we do ask you to acknowledge it. And I just like to call it out here before we start talking about um, the application itself. All right, um, so what we look for, and we truly take a very holistic look at each application. We're looking at every piece of this circle as, as one big picture. Um, you know, you're not just a test score, you're not just a resume. Um, we're really looking to get to know you, um, but we can kind of go piece by piece here to talk a little bit about exactly what's required in the full-time application. Um, so starting with academics, um, we will take a look at your undergraduate record, so your GPA and your transcript, um, as well as any transcripts from any master's programs you may have done so far. Um, we also will ask for a standardized test score. Um, we accept the GMAT, GRE, and the executive assessment. Um, so it's totally up to you which test you want to take. Um, we don't have a preference and we encourage applicants to take whichever test they feel they will perform best on. Um, you know, our, our core curriculum and our electives are quite rigorous, so we do want to make sure we are setting students up for success in the classroom. Um, so that's kind of what we're taking a look at in that piece of the application. Um, next, the professional promise. Um, so this is where we're getting a sense of what have you done in your career so far and what are you looking to do um, in your career after um, achieving your MBA. Um, so we'll look at a professional resume. You know, this is similar to what you would submit for a full-time job um, application. We will ask for one letter of recommendation. Um, we ask for this to be from a direct supervisor, but also understand that's not always feasible for people. Um, and there will be a spot on the application itself to indicate, and if you are not choosing your direct supervisor, just a little sentence of, or two as to why um, you're not and who you're choosing. Um, we'll also ask you on the application to write your post-MBA goal. So again, this is just 
one or two sentences right on the application, you know, very cut and dry, what is your goal after you um, graduate? Um, then you'll expand on that goal in essay one, you know, bring a little bit more color to it and also tell us what your long, long term dream job is in essay one. Um, before we talk about the interview, let's shift over to personal characteristics because the interview kind of falls in both buckets. But the personal characteristics are really our chance to get to know you um, outside of your office, outside of the classroom. You know, who are you and what will you bring to our community um, here at Columbia? As we talked about, you know, community is really important to us. Student involvement is really important to us. So we want to ensure we're bringing people in who are going to, you know, be part of that culture. So we'll look at your extracurricular activities, your hobbies, and then um, you know, in essays two and three, that's really our chance to get to know you. And I always encourage people to be genuine, be authentic in those essays, really bring some color to your application and, and let us get to know you um, as best as you can. Um, and then lastly, the interview. So if you are invited to interview, it would most likely be with um, an alumni of the um, program or sometimes with an admissions officer. Um, and in this interview, that's really a chance for us to get to know you um, more personally off paper. So you'll talk about your career goals, you'll talk about you know, why you want to be at Columbia. Um, and again, just a chance for someone else to you know, give, uh, take a look at who you are and what you'll bring to us um, here at the school. Okay, um, application deadline. So, there's a lot going on on this slide. Um, feel free to take a screenshot if you're thinking about some of these other programs. Uh, but I really want to focus on the full time application deadlines all the way to the left of this slide. Um, but before I even kind of dive in deadline by deadline, the most important thing to understand about our application cycle is that we follow rolling admissions, which is different from a lot of our peer schools. Basically what that means is we are not waiting until these deadlines to start reading applications and admitting students. We have already started reading applications for 2023 and have started building the class. Um, so it's really in your best interest to apply earlier when there are more seats available in the class. However, I would never encourage anyone to rush an application um, feeling like the pressure to submit early. Um, it's really a personal preference when your application is in the place you want it to be and you feel confident, you know, I always say don't sit on it, hit submit and send it over to us. Um, but to kind of break it down deadline by deadline, um, our application is, like I said, open. We have already started reading and submitting, uh, admitting people. Um, so September 28th, just about a month away is our first deadline coming up. So if you're interested in January entry, so starting in that January class, um, this, this upcoming January, 2023, you would need to submit your application by September 28th. Um, that is also our August early decision deadline. So if you know 100% you want to be at Columbia, we are your top choice and this is where you want to be. Um, we encourage you to submit your application through early decision. That's basically you telling us Columbia is my top choice. I will accept an offer of admission if I'm given one and agree to withdraw your application from any other programs um, that you might have submitted. Um, if early decision isn't for you, that's totally, totally okay. And we keep our application open until April 6th. Um, so through regular decision, um, you have, again, through April to submit your application. Uh, just keeping in mind that January 11th deadline. If you want to be considered for a merit-based fellowship, please make sure you submit your application before January 11th. Okay. Um, I know Isaac has been very busy answering questions, um, but I'd like to turn it over to him to call out any questions for myself or for Lauren that have come up today. Yeah, so things have actually been pretty quiet, um, so I don't have anything um, for you all to answer, but perhaps the attendees might want to pipe up with any questions they have right now and utilize us as resources. Thank you.
Oh, we did get a question come in just now. Um, how has the pen how how has the pandemic changed the definition of leader um, at CBS and the curriculum? The, this person wants to know wants to understand how CBS um, is reacting to significant economic and social changes um, like the pandemic. I'm happy to chime in just from the student perspective. Um, so I think like logistically when the pandemic, when things were more shut down, there were Zoom classes. And so um, students were attending class via Zoom that um, has faded out. Um, but I would say in terms of like the support that the school has provided there, they understand that we're still living in a hybrid world and um, for like professional recruiting or networking, there's still opportunities to do that virtually um, and we're supported in the best ways to do that. I would say in terms of the curriculum, um, professors are really great about bringing in um, current events into the classes. So in our um, managerial economics class, for example, the professor spent the first like 20 minutes of the class talking about um, current events. And there were actually part of the curriculum and part of our grade were debates that we had on current events topics. And we were forced to take one side or the other, regardless of our personal views, um, and to argue one side or the other related to you know something that was happening. And some of that had to do with the pandemic. Some of it had to do with other current events happening. Um, but I really felt like even in the core classes, um, it wasn't just theoretical. We were bringing in what was happening in the world around us. Thank you, Lauren. If there are no other questions, I would love to just wrap up with a piece of advice you have, Lauren, and then I can also give my two cents on a piece of advice for any anyone out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, as somebody from a non-traditional background who really had never taken a business class in my life before I came to Columbia Business School, I was a little bit nervous about the rigor of the classes or whether I'd be able to relate to my classmates who had come from more traditional backgrounds. And I realized that the Columbia um, student body is extremely diverse in really every sense of the word, including backgrounds of professional backgrounds. Um, and so I would say, you know, just be really true to who, you're, who you are and what you um, have done in the past and what you're interested in doing in the future and know that there's other people who are in similar positions or have really interesting non-traditional backgrounds as well. Like for example, I thought I was non-traditional, but I have a couple of classmates who were opera singers before and that's even cooler and even more <laughs> non-traditional. Um, so I would say that's, that's my biggest piece of advice. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. I've heard so many times this summer, you know, on campus and on the roads, like I don't have a traditional background and I, I really want to move away from the idea of a traditional MBA candidate, because like Lauren said, it's becoming more and more diverse. Um, and we are excited by these different professional backgrounds to build the class of students who are going to influence each other in ways that, you know, you would never think are possible. Uh, so thank you, Lauren. Uh, and my piece of advice, you know, just from an admissions standpoint, I think I touched on it a little bit, but just be as honest and authentic and transparent as you can be in your application, you know, remember how many we're receiving, um, we just, you know, let us get to know you and, you know, let, let yourself come through and bring as much color to your application as you possibly can, um, is always my advice. Don't, don't write what you think we want to hear, um, but instead, you know, take it as an opportunity for us to get to know you in the most genuine way possible <laughs> through, um, through an application. Um, but if no other questions have come up, I will share our contact information. Um, please feel free to reach out to our team with any questions in the next few weeks, months, years, whatever point you're at in your application journey. Um, we're always happy to help and connect. Um, also, if you're based in New York or planning a trip to New York, our campus is open to prospective students and we'd love to see you um, in our office and on campus. So. If you're looking for additional details around um, that, please visit our website or reach out. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day um, and take care. Bye.